Hey guys, it's BlastLad here, just kind of here with more of a, less of a devlog, more of a, a gameplay video and post-mortem of one of my first projects, Bewitch. Um, this was kind of my first like really big project, big solo project that I worked on, on uh, worked on my own for, um, outside of the lovely title screen that I got one of my friends to uh, agree to make, and it, uh, <laughs> as you can see, it's, it's extremely lovely and it looks great. Um, so, like I said, this was kind of uh, a solo project, so I did the um, the code, the design, the art uh, of the sprites, that is, and then um, I also worked on the audio. Um, I'm going to kind of mute the main track here. Uh, you might be able to hear some of the sound effects, but I'm going to keep the music relatively low. Uh, and the actual sound effects, we got it from freesound.org. Uh, um, <laughs> so... How did this actual project, what's, what was kind of the point of this project? The point of this project was to give myself a time frame to create a, a good product in a relatively short amount of time while I kind of learned a lot about Unity and the overall syntax of what was going on. Um, so the idea actually just kind of came uh, one night when I was like, hey, I should give myself a short amount of time to make a game. What should we make? And that's kind of how Bewitched was born. Uh, the main character named Piper uh, that you play as, the little witch Piper, um, she was a character that I kind of had a, a large fondness for even before the project began. Uh, I experimented using her with some various other concepts uh, that were a little too big in scope for myself at the time. Uh, and I was thinking about how can we make some, how can I make something that uh, would allow me to increase my skills while not creating a larger a, a super large scope that i won't be able to do alone and the idea was basically well let's make an arcade game because those should be a lot easier to make as a solo developer um and then the concept came from there uh i'm gonna jump into the game now this is just kind of a little control screen that i made just to kind of teach you about how the game works because like i said if we're going for an arcade based thing i think it was kind of cute to have like a little manual screen and once again it kind of goes in with the aesthetic of the game which we'll look at in a second that being that it uh you're in a little magic school and uh the controls are all on a chalkboard uh power-ups enemies carter bubbles and rugby and then of course you have piper herself uh we also have a little scoreboard but we'll get to that in a minute so when the game starts, you just kind of spawn in and you're allowed to move around as Piper and you are presented with a lot of these enemies. Uh, they're really the only other thing that's moving. They're the only thing that's animated in the actual map, uh, which kind of helps with you noticing that, hey, you could probably interact with these. Think about like old animation videos when like you see something that clearly could be interacted or clearly was going to be animated and changed in the, in the upcoming scene, as opposed to like a hand-drawn background. Uh, that's kind of the idea with that, but um, it, basically the concept is that Piper, and this was the concept that uh, was originally come up, I uh, came up with in bed before uh, deciding to work on this project, was that uh, you are a little witch named Piper who is in a magic school and you accidentally enchanted all the furniture in your school uh, from a spell gone awry. And in order to not get caught by your professors and your, uh, your other teachers, you are trying to control the situation on your own, as people do, uh, so they don't get caught. And what Piper's doing is she's putting all the uh, wild furniture to sleep using a sleep spell. That way, they don't gobble up the students, because they are some hungry, hungry furniture. And whenever a student passes uh, the furniture, they kind of wake up, uh, wake up the object a little. So the um, furniture will change uh, to a different color to signify that they're going to be waking up soon. And then after you don't interrupt, uh, if you don't put them back to sleep, they will wake up. And then as we just saw there, uh, eat students when they pass in front. So there are three different enemies, Bubbles, Carter, and Rugby. Bubbles is the cauldron. Uh, they are objects that are on the side of the paths that the students walk on, but uh, if a student walks in front of them, they will gobble them up. Uh, card, uh, rugby is uh, another stationary enemy that takes place 
on the actual carpet of the um, floor. So like they're directly in the path of the students. And then Carter is the moving enemies that you saw that go in the up and uh, one horizontally, one vertically. And um, unlike the other ones, they kind of wake up on their own already. So they're kind of supposed to be a harder enemy to deal with. And this is just a little scoreboard. Like I said, we are going for an arcade based game. So this uh, kind of shows off um, the scoreboard that we made, which was really helpful of kind of learning a lot of uh, Unity um, save system stuff. Uh, it's based on um, server, uh, on, on console, I should say, uh, where you did download it on, and then you can just go back and then go right in. So uh, just kind of talking about what went right and what went wrong, wrong, quote unquote. Uh, for our first project, I am amazingly happy with how this turned out. Uh, I had a blast working on this. We have the score up there. Um, making all the art was super exciting and fun to do. Uh, towards the end of the project, it, it did start to get a little tedious, but uh, I think it ended up work. I think it looks uh, very cute. I think the aesthetic works out great for this. And I'm really happy with how the gameplay and concept worked out. Because basically, um, one thing that's going on is that as your score goes up, uh, the time between the students spawning at the top and the um, time and, and the, the speed of the students themselves increase. So it makes the game progressively harder just as the game goes on. Uh, and that's in order to avoid having to create multiple levels like uh, they do in uh, you know more arcade, 80s arcade games like Pac-Man, you know, Mario, uh, Donkey Kong, things like that. Um, it makes it so that you don't have to uh, create multiple levels, but you can still kind of make the game progressively get harder and add a little bit of mastery to it. Um, and it, that worked out really nicely. Same thing with adding these extra enemies and the power-ups. They kind of add a little bit of a more intense objectives that um, you um, immediately don't have to think about. And... Those were kind of added after the main gameplay was added, so it kind of fits the theme, too. Um, some things that I... And it was also a lot of fun to, of course, work on like some rendering things, like having Piper go behind the this bookshelf and things like that was also really fun to work on. Uh, you can, of course, reference the controls right from here, uh, which is always fun to do. Um, but things... What what does this te what does this project really kind of do for me? Uh, I think the best part about it was it would allowed me to create something completely on my own uh, with not a lot of guidance and just kind of go wild with it. Because um, you know when you first kind of start out trying to make these things, uh, you might overscope things, you might underscope some things, and you might not be happy with the result of a project. Um, I know when I was doing a lot of tutorial projects and kind of like trying to apply those concepts with other early, early projects, uh, I would get a little frustrated because um, your knowledge level wasn't really uh, at the level where you could really work on those more bigger, increased ideas. Um, so now those are just uh, goals that we're working towards. But these projects like these allow me to create something that I'm really happy with and I really love working on while I progressively work towards those later goals. Um, because I, I love Bewitched and I love the character Piper. I think they are, are so cute. I, I love the aesthetic of this game. Um, I love the gameplay. It's super simple. It's just an arcade game. I think it's really something special. And I'm, I'm very proud of uh, what it ended up being created and we can now work our way towards these um more in intense games or these these larger in scope games well i can allow people to download uh cute little ideas like this and and apple seed and i wish i could hold you my hands are made of blades and mother um one thing that i do wish Probably could have been a little better was uh there was a little bit of a learning curve in the beginning uh the people that i've had play tests die very quickly in the first few minutes of the game or in the first few seconds of the game 
uh, because you know it is a little overwhelming they kind of do spawn pretty fast but after you play like two or three runs through you kind of get into a groove and you get and you really kind of get uh, used to the flow of the game um, which is nice because you know eventually it allows you to rack up those like a hundred thousand uh, scores and um, but there is definitely a little bit of a learning curve initially although once you kind of get the hang of it it's kind of just you're at that mastery level and you're just constantly getting a little better and then I would have also liked to have uh, had the sideways walking animations for the students um, but that's really those are really the only two things that really came to my mind when I was like Oh, what could we do better to really make uh to really kind of make a definitive version of this arcade chip? Um, we're kind of getting to thirteen minutes, so I want to I want to kind of end off quick. Um, but this is also a really cute project because I can kind of expand this a little. Um, in terms of I do I do want to do like just a quick little project where I get this on mobile, because uh, this is definitely a mobile accessible game. Uh, it's one screen. You can move around the character, you can shoot with the other directions on the other side of the screen. And um, it would be, it'd be a really good way to just kind of quickly uh, put something on an app store and learn a little bit more about how, how that dynamic works. And then I used it before in the Mother to vlog, and I'm going to use it again here, but I use the term loosely. This is almost like a reverse tower defense. Um, where his mother was a reverse metroidvania. This is a reverse tower defense because you're basically guiding um, students to the end of a, a screen, in this case the bottom of the screen, and you're protecting them from generally stationary inanimate objects. Whereas in a tower defense, you're generally trying to stop the people that are coming from the top from getting to the bottom with objects you place around the screen. So I use that term loosely, but that's just a really good way to explain what's going on. And if I ever did want to expand this project further, uh, I definitely think it's possible. Like with a super bewitched, I definitely think it's possible. And I do already had kind of some concepts on like how we can do that. Uh, of course, we it would really kind of expand upon that idea of a reverse tower defense at that point. Um, where you're playing as Piper and some other characters and you're trying to kind of protect the uh, marching enemies from more stationary ones uh, and you would be going around in a lot more locations, there'd be a lot more um, environments and levels. Uh, of course that is all theoretical if we went in that direction. Um, just kind of some closing notes that's really about it uh as a post-mortem i'm very happy with how the project came out and yeah i hope that kind of was at least uh semi-entertaining to watch and i hope i hope you enjoyed uh kind of learning a little bit more about bewitched and projects in general uh thanks for joining me bye